Good morning, everyone. My name is Audrey. I am Stitchy Witch 42 here on Floss Tube and over on Instagram. This is my channel about cross stitch, life, the universe, and everything. And today is Monday, the 8th of July, 2024. It is currently 69 degrees outside. We are supposed to get up to 103 today, 106 tomorrow, and have temperatures in the high 90s until about the 20th of July when it will drop. I'm melting. I've already gone out and done some watering and now I'm staying inside with the AC. I hope everybody is doing the same. So it's been a couple of weeks since I did my last video. And in my last video, I was asked to include some photos in this one. And I will be doing both of those at the end of the video. Um, there is a series of six photos on what my kitchen shelves looked like before we started our makeover and what they look like now. It was a real simple process. I used, we used the same shelves which are made out of particle board. I couldn't remember that in my last video. We just covered them with contact paper. The old time, or the old paper was a blue and white. We've now switched to a wood grain. And instead of the regular ugly L brackets, I have industrial looking pipe brackets. And I love the way they look. And they fit into my kitchen so well. So those photos will be included towards the end of the video. The other thing I was asked to include pictures of was of Mark's Jeep. And we went, we participated in a 4th of July parade in Independence, Oregon on the 4th. And I took some photos of how we decorated Chug. So there will be, I think, three photos at the end of what Chug looked like all decorated for the 4th of July. The parade itself was fun. Participating in it was fun. The not so fun part was the three plus hours of sitting in the Jeep in the staging area in 90 degree weather with no shade. The communication from the parade masters, if you will, to those of us who were pit were participating in it was not very clear and could have been done better as far as I'm concerned. But the parade itself was fun. There were so many people. It went from Monmouth, Oregon to Independence, Oregon, which is about a six mile uh, route that we took. When we drove in in the morning, there were a lot of empty chairs where people were claiming their spot and they were full plus. And it was a blast. People were laughing, people were smiling and waving. My cheeks hurt so much from smiling so much. It was fun. Will we do it again? I hope not. <laughs> I think once was enough. But anyway, photos of the Jeep, photos of my kitchen will be included at the end of the video. I have been working on some things and I have three finishes. Two are fully finished. One was a start and a finish. And is probably the tiniest finish I've ever made. So this is the pattern I use. This is one of the ones that I picked out for my hashtag 24 bats in 2024. This is Halloween bat postage stamps, cute embroidery by Kate. And it looks big there. The finish size, the fully finished size is one and five eighths by one and seven eighths.
there you go. I had an idea that I wanted to try to put a grommet or an eyelet or whatever you want to call it through this so that I could hang it as a charm, but my eyelets are not big enough. The shaft wasn't big enough to go through two layers of matte board. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to display this because it's tiny. It's tiny. It's a tiny little bat, but it's so cute. So, I just got that one finished yesterday. Um, our son Philip came down yesterday to help Mark work on a project out in the backyard. They didn't get very much done because they needed cement and the local hardware shop was out of it. So Mark hopefully will be picking that up and I might get my patio by this, the end of the summer. Right now I don't want to be out there. Did I say it's supposed to be 103 today? No, I, I, I don't want to be out there. Um, my other fully finished one was another project for my 24 bats in 2024. This is a Mill Hill Cat. This one is Bat Cat. It's bigger than the other one. But this is really, really pretty. And I don't know if you can see the sparkle of the beads on that, but it is very, very cute. When I finish my Mill Hill kits, I use sticky back felt. And what I will do is I will cut out the felt to the same size as the piece of perforated paper that I'm working on. I will put whatever type of hanger I'm working on. I usually sew them into the project so that they're secure. But then I put the felt all the way over the back of it so that when I'm trimming it, trimming around the edges, I'm cutting the felt at the same time. And it makes for a really, really nice finish. So those are two starts and finishes. Well, the little postage stamp only took two days. The Mill Hill, if I sit down and I start a Mill Hill start to finish, they usually take me about three days to do. This one took a little bit longer because I was working on some other things. I'm going to save my big finish for a little while. I'm going to save my big finish for a little while simply because I have to. I have to. So I have been stitching on Stitchy Witchy Bell Pull by Stitchy Pros. Which is this one. Better if I show it to you the right side up. It's that one. I am stitching this on 32 count Mad Hatter's Tea Party by Dames of the Needle. And this is where I've gotten to on this. This row right here has Algerian eyelets in it. I think I've done them before, but just like with any specialty stitch, words, any specialty stitch, it sometimes takes a couple of them to get into the rhythm of getting them done right. But I like the way this is looking. On the pattern, the thread on the spools is all designated as cross stitch. I don't like the way that looks, so I simply swapped them out for satin stitch. And I am keeping all of this in a project bag that the lovely Colleen of Stitching with the Sisters, Sisterlies, gave to me several years ago. I think the first time I met her was when she gave it to me. I don't know why, but you know, thank you Colleen. I love it. And it's one that I use often. I'm bad about using project bags. I have a ton of them upstairs, but I just don't ever seem to get around to using them. 
which is why I don't buy anymore because I have a ton of them upstairs. So I started a new piece day before yesterday I think it was. It is out of Just Cross Stitch Halloween Special 2024. It's one of the ones that I told you about. Doo -doo -doo. This one, Magic Beans Cafe. When I started it, I went upstairs and I have a bunch of fabric. I have an armoire in our bedroom that used to house a television in it. We don't have a television in our bedroom. So I had Mark put a dowel rod in there so that I could hang my linens and my Adas and all my fabrics in there. And after getting that all organized and everything, I really don't need to buy fabric. Will that stop me from buying fabric? No, but I really don't need to buy fabric. So when I went to start this one, I went upstairs and I pulled a rogue stitching um, fabric called Relic, which is a very pretty, pretty fabric. I got about a dozen stitches into it and thought, nope, this is not the background I want for this piece. So I went back upstairs and I pulled out another fabric and this one is blue. This is Oxygen by Atomic Ranch Fabrics. And this is what I've gotten done on my Magic Beans. So this is a day and a half of stitching. It was warm yesterday, so I pretty much sat and curled up in my chair and did a bunch of stitching. And right now there's only two colors on there. But it's going to fit in a 6x6 six six frame. So when I get it done, I can put this in my kitchen on my shelves. And I will put glass over it because... I don't know about your kitchen, but everything in my kitchen kind of gets this dirty, greasy cover. It just does. So, my cross stitch that I have in there, um, I have a little piece that Cheryl had made for me that ha is coffee related, and I have it under a glass dome because it's a drum. The two pieces my granddaughter started for me and I finished, um, I have them on canisters, so they're not covered. But I'm not too worried about them being damaged. I think I can clean them if I had to. This one I'm going to make sure that when I get it framed that it has glass in front of it. You know, when it comes to framing and things like that, a lot of it depends on how I'm going to use it. My Alphonse Mukas all have glass on them, regular glass not the museum glass. And that's because I don't have them where it would have made sense to um, get the museum glass. My Stonehenge that I have down here and a couple of pieces that I have upstairs have glass on them. And again, it all depends on where I'm going to have it at in my house. Because all these pieces back here well, my Halloween balcony um, has glass on it. My house suite, it is to be loved by you, has glass on it. My kissing skeletons. My kissing skeletons do not. My caramia does not. My... My acorns piece, it's a flat mount, so obviously it doesn't have glass on it. But out here, the worst that I have to deal with is dust. And there's always dust in my house. It's just a natural thing, yeah. 
So it depends on how I'm going to finish it. It depends on where I'm going to display it. Um, if I spend a lot of money having something framed, it's almost always going to have glass in front of it. Because if I'm investing that much money in it, I want to protect the stitch work. If it's something that I'm going to use for Halloween or monthly displays, I haven't changed anything here since Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Um, then a lot of times I don't put glass in front of my pieces. It just all depends. But if it's going in my kitchen, it will have glass in front of it simply because things get dirtier in there, it seems to be. Alrighty. Well, this video isn't going to be very, very long at all because I'm down to my last, last thing to show you. You all know that I have been stitching Lola Crow's The Haunted Library. I love this piece so much. It's what I stitched on the most. I got it done so fast and I just love the way it looks. I was looking through our, um, we have a box of frames, and I was looking through to see if I could find anything in there that would work for this piece but could not find anything so I'm actually going to have to take it and see if I can find a frame for it. But I love, love, love how this has turned out. This is the Haunted Library. And it is fabulous. Right now I have it wrapped around the pattern itself and that's about how I want to frame it up close, but so that you can still see the spider web behind it. I've had a number of people ask me, both in person and through the videos, if I did the spider webbing. That's all fabric. That is all, all the fabric. It is a printed piece from Rogue Stitching, Sunflower Printed Fabrics, and it's called Spider Web. And this was the one that I, when I first showed it to you, was white, but I tea stained it. And when I tea stained it, all I did was take three or four tea bags, dip them in warm water, wring out the majority of the water, and dabbed it across the whole thing to give it a very mottled effect. But that, that is gorgeous. So it will be put away until I get a frame for it. I think this is one that I could frame myself. I don't know. It all depends. I'll try and if I can't, I will take it down to my local lady and ask her to do it for me. And the last thing. I was doing a giveaway on my last video for the dark flame and the fabric, or not fabric, the week's dye work trick or treat floss. Eight people said the words that they needed to say. I looked at my son yesterday and I said, pick a number between one and eight, and he goes number seven. Number seven, according to my list, is Nancy Gignac dash Terry. 3497. Nancy, congratulations. Um, I will leave my email address down below. Please send me an email and something in, in the title so that I know it's from this, this uh, video with your mailing address and I will get that out to you as soon as I can. I don't have anything else to talk about. Things found a new perch. I was at a garage sale the other day and I found these two spools for two dollars a piece and, and things decided that he likes being up high. So he'll sit there for a little while until he gets tired of that and then he'll move on to somewhere else. 
Other thing is upstairs because I was trying to make a scissor holder out of him and I still haven't gotten around to painting him. So he's just hanging out upstairs on my desk. This Wednesday I'm going to be up at Acorns and Threads. It's Biscornu Babes Day or Whip Wednesday or whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to head up there and do some stitching with the ladies and try to stay cool. So until we meet again, my friends, live long and stitch on. Bye-bye.